Welcome back to the garage, everyone. All right, so I was thinking to myself, you know, what the world needs is yet another video on how to remove or replace the cylinder lock on a mid-80s Mercedes-Benz car, in this case, a W126 S-Class. If you've never done this, this will be great. If you have, then you'll be, it'll be boring. But anyway, we'll, we'll see how it goes. And I'm not gonna go into the why and the what fors and all that kind of stuff, okay? These things break and you need to replace them. That's just leave it at that. Now, in order to replace this thing, you're gonna need a tool. And I'll talk about the tool there in a moment. First off, you're gonna disconnect your battery, okay? Now, you're gonna take the key and you're gonna turn it over here to the accessory position. That's position number one, which normally would, would be analogous to, you know, the radio coming on. All right, so now that you're in that position, you're gonna, you got, a, you got a little hole right there, okay? Now, you're gonna place a very slender piece of metal down in there and you're gonna disengage a spring-loaded clip that is gonna allow you to extract the cylinder lock. All right, well, how do you extract it once you insert the tool into the hole? So once you insert the tool, you depress a spring, and that allows you to turn this cover that is on the exterior of the cylinder lock. You will turn it in a counterclockwise position, and it will draw this entire assembly out in one piece, all right? So that is the way we're going to remove it. Now, this procedure does in fact change with different generations or versions of the W126 Mercedes. The car that we are working on here today is a Gen 1 uh, 126, but the cylinder lock setup on these cars is a little bit different. It doesn't coincide with the Gen 1, Gen 2 cutoff, which is 1985, right? This particular style of ignition uh, system or a cylinder lock is, goes up until August of 1989, and I'm going to show you a picture of the procedure and that date right here. Now that you've had a chance to take a look at that, uh, we'll show you the next version of the instructions for cars that were produced as of September of 89 going forward. And I'll put that a picture of those instructions right here. Now the tools that you're gonna to use to, do, to extract the cylinder lock on both versions of the 126 car are, they're a little bit different, okay? On the cars up to August of 89, you're gonna use a single little pick tool and I will put that a picture of that right here. And on the cars September of 89 uh, and going forward, and, then, and again, this is just 126 cars, uh, you're gonna have a doubled up or a sort of a, a V-pronged tool, okay? It won't be a singular tool. And I'll put a picture of that right here. Now, I don't have the proper tool. Why? Well, it's taken forever to come in because of the supply chain constraints that we're experiencing in our wonderful world these days. However, I have been looking around to try come up with a suitable replacement, and I thought about using a paper clip, and I'm like, nah, I don't know. Paper clip, I'd probably work, but it's, paper clips are too soft, okay? You need spring steel. Where are you gonna find really thin spring steel? Guess what? You know those little rings that you hold your keys on or, you know, on your classic cars? You find a nice slender one, and this used to be in a springed up coil, and I got the pliers out and I made it look like this. I also beveled the end so that it is at an angle, so the end of it, you know, it's not straight across it, it's at an angle, right? Because you want, when you insert this thing, you're gonna come across a spring-loaded, piece of metal in there and the angle will kind of poke up that way and it'll scoot over the top of it and the metal will, and the tool will be between the cylinder lock and the cover and it will have a natural tendency to depress the spring-loaded latch inside there if the end of it is beveled uh, in, 
in an upward fashion so it'll press down like that. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera down. We're gonna go ahead and take this cylinder lock out of our car. Now, pardon the uh, dustiness and, and everything. These modern cameras tend to pick up every little minuscule defect in your automobile. And of course, I've already removed the, uh, this cover right here, okay? So we'll put that on when we're done. We'll put that back on when we're done. So I've already got the key into the accessory position. <laughs> I was a little paranoid because this one is starting to stick pretty bad. So I was like, man, I better get that over an accessory and leave it there until I was able to figure out how to make a tool to do this job. So I'm going to go ahead and slip this up in there. You can feel it. It gets right there and you can feel it kind of sliding past something, you know, and it gets a little harder I'd say it probably goes once you hit that little hard part and you go another maybe an eighth of an inch or something not, not much really and you should be able to just start unscrewing this cover all right like that and the cover and the cylinder lock, I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna put a little outward pressure here. All right, we're gonna continue. My tool slipped out of the spring loaded area and I had to reposition it so I could continue extracting. Let's see, how far out are we gonna go here? I don't know how many threads are on this thing. As long as it keeps turning, I think we're there. There we go. There we go. How about that? This is a piece of spring steel from a keychain, okay? It's very thin. I don't know what the thickness is. Uh, probably maybe just over a millimeter. Because the, the, the tool that's meant for this car, for this particular generation, is supposed to be, I believe, 1.25 millimeters in thickness, but that using a keychain spring steel is an excellent alternative. I got to pull the key out, so there we go. Slip that in there. Whoops! <laughs> and this is our cylinder uh, that came out that uh, is original to the car. And you can, you can clearly see this is an original Mercedes part. I thought about ordering an original Mercedes part. They're like $169 for a, uh, for a cylinder lock. I was like, you know what? Well, I don't think I'm going to do that. I've already ordered a, a, Phoebe, a Phoebe Bilstein. It was like $25. And I've got it here. I'm gonna, we're going to put it in here just shortly. Uh, but I just wanted to give this a good looking over before we did that. I mean, what exactly is it inside this that's broken, you know? Are the tumblers just worn out? I mean, this is a 200,000 mile car, right? But I've got a 50 year old car sitting over there to the right, to my right, that's got 100,000 miles on it and its key thing works fine. So I don't, something, you know, this is a common problem with these cars. You guys all know that. Why? Do the tumblers wear out? I got a Volkswagen that's got 260,000 miles on it. Key works fine. I had an 81 Cadillac that had about 250,000 miles on it. Key never broke. Key always worked fine. So what is it about these that wears out and breaks? I'd be curious to know that. We may take this apart later. All right, so let's move on. Take a look at our sleeve here. There's actually a, a little tool, and it's $58 on Pelican, okay? And the tool, its only purpose in life is to slip around this and turn it the way I did it with my fingers. However, if you need to get in there, if it won't come off with your fingers, there's something wrong, okay? Um, and the inside looks fantastic. It looks brand new, really. The threads look perfect. It looks really good. No problems with this at all. We'll just reinstall that. We'll, we, won't, we won't even touch that. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is, I'm probably just gonna maybe, I think I'll just wipe this out a little bit and then probably apply a little bit of white lithium grease. And then we'll lubricate the interior of our new cylinder lock and uh, we'll install that next. 
let's see. It doesn't look bad in there, really. I'm just kind of, kind of rummage around a little bit. Got a little dark grease out of there, but uh, it's not bad. I like to use this uh, white lithium grease for, uh, you know, stuff inside the, in, in the car. It's just, you know, less messy, really. All right, we're gonna go ahead and go install our new cylinder lock. I've already uh, lubricated the inside there, cleaned it out a little bit. And as, you, as I told you before, I used an existing piece of spring steel that I got from a, uh, a keychain that I had just laying around the house. I decided to make another one from another keychain that I obtained from the Phoebe Bilstein kit to which these keys were attached. How about that? So hopefully, and this is just a theory, this may not work, we may revert back to the old tool. So if the theory is sound, the Phoebe Bilstein cylinder lock, the keys, and the keys come with the tool built in. So how cool is that? All right, so we're gonna take our new cylinder, uh, key, move it over to the left in position one, slip it into place, line up the slot, put your key in all the way, move it over to position one, and we take our new tool, and hopefully move it over that way a little bit and see what happens. Move it a little further. Yeah, that's a ticket. Yeah, I just had, didn't have it in the right spot. Yeah, so in my case, I had to move it a little bit beyond position one to get it to, you know, cinch down properly. So keep that in mind. You might have to fiddle with it a little bit. Give me a challenge holding that in place. Let's give it a shot here. I'm gonna push down on that tool continually. No, I, didn't, I don't have the slot lined up. And this is like doing brain surgery. We've got it moved over too far. There we go. There we go. Now we gotta keep that tool slipped in there. Gotta hold your mouth just right too. That always helps. Now we're gonna get this cylinder. It'll tighten up. About right there. See right there, my key's still in that position one. You're done. Pull it out. <laughs> guess what guess what we just learned all right so hey we've got our brand new uh, cylinder in there everything's hunky dory right well let's find out ah put your key in and it won't turn put your key in oh it's brand new Barely turns, just the way it was before. I've got to coax it back and forth and mess with the steering wheel and all kinds of stuff to get it to work. Whoops. Well, there you go. It looks like there is a problem with the ignition switch or the steering wheel lock or something else because the cylinder lock itself seems to be not the problem, clearly. And I was noticing when I pulled my original one out, here's my, uh, my original key. And uh, let's see, there we go. You can hear it clicking a little bit. And I don't know if that's normal or not, but this, this key, when you put it in, there is a slight little, you know, resistance sometimes, right? 
and I've heard, you know, I've, I've been seeing videos, people com complaining, oh, there must be the cylinder that's going bad, and you need to replace it, and blah, blah, blah. I'm, I just don't know now. I may have two problems, right? So you have this thing, right? It kind of rough to go in. You've got to, you've got to push it past that, right? But once you get it in, it works just fine. But you saw what I did up here, right? Just a minute ago, I had to struggle to get this thing to turn. Uh, so I think the issue is uh, in the ignition switch up inside there, or the uh, you know the steering lock or, or something like that. I'm going to call this a win loss. Uh, we went through the process of replacing the cylinder lock, only to discover that wasn't our problem. So that leads us to another issue, which will come in the next video. All right, folks, I appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, like the one where I really fixed the problem instead of showing you how to do a few things, well, go ahead and click the little bell down below. And... Uh, so frustrating. All right, folks, you have a good one. We'll talk to you soon.